3616 Broadview. I did think this one would potentially make for an interesting deal uh, for somebody who's trying to get started in real estate investing, but they're trying to do a house hack. It's not often you can pick up a property like this low cost. Yes, it's a little bit higher uh, than a lot of the C-grade stuff you're going to see in Cleveland, uh, but it's not often you can combine something under 200K in 2024 uh, that has got a completely private backyard butted up to woods that are never going to go anywhere. Welcome to the Investment Properties for Sale show, folks. Thing is selling at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't want to be giving it to you straight. All right, y'all. Today is a little different. A little, little change, change of scenery here. We're going to spice it up a little bit. This one, 3616 Broadview Road, okay? Now, this one, uh, you know... Truth be told, if you're, you know, just going at Cleveland uh, specifically for the cash flow, it's probably going to be close to the 1% rule, maybe just a little bit less, right? Uh, you're going to want to fix it up a little bit. Like, it's a little dated. As far as, like, the bones go on the particular property, they're all good. Like, you got newer roof, furnace, hot water tank. But as you can see, the current owner, all their stuff's in there. Everything's dated. So you're going to want to do fresh coat of paint, probably make some adjustments to the kitchen countertops, things like that. And you'll be able to generate probably about 1600 just because the house is so big, the location's, like, where it's at. Um, but, you know, you're going to definitely be over 160000 all in for the sucker. So for like a pure out-of-state investor cash flow play, I would say the interest on this one that I think the audience that you guys are all probably going to have is probably going to be a little bit lower than uh, what we would normally see, right? You guys' appetite is for some ROIs that are going to be a little bit higher, right? Probably exceeding that 1% rule. Um, but I did think this one would potentially make for an interesting deal uh, for somebody who's trying to get started in real estate investing, but they're trying to do a house hack. Now, there is not just one specific way to do a house hack, y'all. There's many ways to do a house hack, right? They got that that saying, which is just creepy as fuck, actually, honestly. They say, you know, there's more than one ways to skin a cat. And I find it really weird that we just, like, people just drop that saying. Like, yo, like, what? Like, has anyone ever been like, wait, what? What the fuck? Who the fuck is skinning a cat? And why the fuck are they skinning a cat, right? We should really honestly be asking that. I don't get why people say that, right? It almost just rolled off my tongue there because that's just like a normal saying that a motherfucker should be saying. But like, what the fuck, dog? Who in the fuck is skinning a cat, man? I was watching that fucking Netflix show, Making a Murderer, with that Stephen Avery dude. And I'm not even a fucking cat guy, to be honest with you. I'm really not. I'm not a cat guy. I got dogs. I'm not a cat guy. But anyway, Anyway, that Stephen Avery making a murderer one where, like, you know, he went to jail for murder, but then he was found innocent, but then they charged him with murder again. And, you know, everybody, everybody saw it. Everybody saw it, right? I remember, specifically, they glossed over this fucking shit. But specifically, they were talking how he was younger, and he was at a bonfire one day, and he was drunk, and he just picked up a fucking cat, and he threw that motherfucker in the bonfire. Don't y'all remember that shit? They just glossed over it like it was no big thing. Like, wow! What kind of fucking psychopath just picks up a fucking cat and throws that motherfucker in a bonfire. Whether or not he actually killed those chicks, fuck that motherfucker. You should put his ass in jail because that motherfucker's crazy, right? Anyway, we're getting off track. And again, I'm not even like a cat guy, really. But like, you can't just be fucking throwing shit in a fire and you can't be fucking skinning shit. It's just fucking creepy. But anyway. So, back to house hacking. Right? Different ways to house hack, right? One way to house hack, you can buy a property, right? Buy a property, move in a bunch of roommates, right? You could totally do that here, right? You could totally do that here. It's a four bedroom house. You could do that. Or another thing that's pretty cool, you buy a house, right? You no longer pay rent to a landlord. You only pay your mortgage and you buy that house with low money down, right? You do like an FHA loan. You only put down 3.5% as opposed to 25% on a rental property. Then you live there by yourself for at least one year, and then you move out, buy a new house with another new low down payment loan, and then you turn your old house into 
a pure rental property, right? So both scenarios would involve you buying this particular property with like 3.5% down, maybe 5% down, right? Living there for a year and then moving out. In one scenario, you could generate rental income while you're living there by renting out the other three rooms because the house is huge. In the other scenario, you just live there by yourself. Totally up to you. I got my start in 09 house hacking, okay? And the reason I bring this up, the reason I talk house hacking with you guys specifically, uh, is because I think if you're going to do a house hack... You have to look at the property for something more than just the pure numbers, right? Because, like, if you're going to live in Cleveland just based on the pure numbers, like, a lot of the properties that you see might not necessarily be as desirable as the location that you want to specifically live in, right? So if – because you got to live there in a house hack, guys. So you have to – somewhere in there you have to factor in – your lifestyle, and, like, your actual enjoyment, right? Because, like, a pure rental property, right, it's specifically a numbers-based, risk-based buying decision, right? You're not physically living in your rental property typically, right? So you can be more by the book, by the calculation, so to speak, right? But in a house hack, you have to specifically live there, right? And if you're going to specifically live somewhere, you're probably going to want to enjoy it. So this one is a little bit different than, like, 95% of the inventory you're ever going to see in the city of Cleveland, right? This one butts up to like um, like a very old, uh, very, very old um, graveyard. Uh, what do they call them? Graveyard, right? Is that what they call them? What's the other thing they call them? Not just graveyard. Uh, come on, they don't just always refer to it as graveyard. Cemetery! Thank you. I couldn't... That that didn't roll off the tip of my tongue, much like skinning a cat does. I don't can't remember the word cemetery, but I remember that creepy ass thing. But anyway, so this is like an old cemetery. I think the cemetery specifically, because uh, it's no longer owned by a funeral company, it's actually owned by the city. So I believe it is, uh, you know, because eventually, guys, cemeteries they fill up, right? You get too many dead bodies in there, and you you can't sell new plots because they're just completely full, right? And then I think it just goes back to the city, and the city maintains the grounds and whatnot. So I think that's what happened here, right? So it butts up. Uh, to a cemetery, right? So you, it's completely private, right? It's like on this dead end street, and it's completely private, and it goes up to a cemetery, but it's like kind of all covered by woods and stuff, right? So, like, I guess the reason I bring it up as a potential house hack is it's not often you could pick up a property like this low cost. Yes, it's a little bit higher uh, than a lot of the C grade stuff you're going to see in Cleveland, uh, but it's not often you can combine something under 200k in 2024 uh, that has got a completely private backyard butted up to woods that are never going to go anywhere, right? It's not like a new developer could come in and, and just destroy the uh, the cemetery and you got a new housing development behind you, right? It doesn't work that way. So it's always going to be like that. Like there are literally laws against people doing that, like, you know, because of all the dead bodies and whatnot and the, the families and stuff, right, who've buried their loved ones there or whatever. So like it's just a very unique opportunity, right? So for this one to make sense for you guys, you got to think as a house hacker and you got to kind of like open up your mind a little bit to like, eh, you know what? I do kind of got to live there. So like, you know, maybe I'll enjoy my life a little bit. I want you guys to think. Maybe you want to buy it. Maybe you don't. But at least think of that kind of stuff when you're doing house hacks, guys, because you got to live somewhere and you only live once, motherfuckers. So you might as well like where you live. If you're interested in this property, shoot me an email, sales at HoltonWeiss.com. Uh, it's currently owner occupied. So if you'd like to tour it prior to, just let us know, sales at HoltonWeiss.com, and we will set you up with him, uh, and he will let you in, and y'all motherfuckers could run around and fucking look at the shit and look at his private-ass backyard and, you know, do your fucking thing. Let's go. Three six one six Broadview. Yeah, I heard about the dogs. Yeah, I'm not going back there.
cool ass cemetery next door though. I'll look all the way back out so I can get the front again with a tilted angle. Yeah, that's a better shot for the photo. It's in good shape on the outside though. That might be an issue if it's a rental, but... Hello. I, I knocked. I wasn't sure where you guys were. No, so I we were in the froze. Um, the he just opened the garage. He saw the dog. I don't know if he I did. didn't see him, but he, he's, like he's way side. in the back. Yeah, he's in the back. So I figured we'd just do the inside and we'll get the backyard garage after. Perfect. Yeah. The dog yeah. And then we'll be good. That'll be good. Uh, is this a dining room, bedroom over here? Uh, living room? No, uh, in, in this room here. Oh, this, this is a study, but we turned it into a bedroom. He said the kitchen appliances are not staying up today. Okay. Yeah. So, I, uh, I'm going to kind of let him do this thing if you kind of want to do something. And then if you just want to kind of guide me, I assume that'll go upstairs, the kitchen's over there. Is that a room or a closet? That's a closet. Oh, okay. I don't know. The, none of the appliance. No, okay. None of the appliance, but this is staying. Okay. And the built-in dishwasher is staying. Gotcha. Okie dokie. And also the furnace uh, fireplace. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. uh, two bathrooms? Two bathrooms. Okie dokie. You're good. My, I'm going so slow with my pan. I won't get. I promise. I won't get you. Mm -hmm. One. One. Uh. Do these steps go all the way upstairs or no? Other side. Other side. Well, of it has a door that connects. It's got like a four-way entry point, but. Oh, okay. You mind if I do the? Basement? Basement stuff yeah. now? Okay. Oh, I see. Yep. Alright. The lights might be on in there. No. Uh, no. Wait, it's okay. That's why I got this nice fancy light with me. There's a switch right there. Yeah. Oh, nice. Newer hot water tank. filtration system. That's pretty cool. Here. 
Oh, good. I was like, I, I heard him in the kitchen. I didn't want to get you out on camera, though. All right. And then upstairs. Okay, I'll wait for you. So, does the, the all of your uh, original hardware for the keys yeah. are in here? They're skeleton keys. Oh, cool. I don't even know if they sell them anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, though. Mm -hmm. It's four bedrooms. And then... Sorry, kitty. This is cool though. I love these old houses that have these big like Uh-huh. It's one of the big south points of why we bought the house because we're like, oh my god, the wood bark. When'd you guys buy? We bought it uh, summer of 2009. Oh, okay. We've been in the house for about 10 and a half years now. Just outgrow it or are you looking to um, downsize? Downsize and a little bit of, uh, we bought some property out, out of town. Oh, okay. We're just kind of, we're kind of sick of the city life, I guess. Yeah, and you're right in the thick of it too, right by all the hustle and bustle. Yeah. Is the attic finished space or is it just uh It uh, is just an attic. Okay. Uh, so whoever gets it will have to uh, put in a roof. Okay. Like the actual area of the roof. Uh, you'll, you'll see it when it looks there. It's intact. It just needs like finish. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Some walls put up and things like that. It should be unlocked. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are cool though. Mm hmm. I believe the wood for it is. Uh, I think all of the wood is cherry wood, which is super oh. illegal now. <laughs> right? It got so hot, my my gimbal decided it wanted to poop out. Looks like this room was starting to become a room. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.